Hello everyone, this is Suzanne from Baby Bunting Nursery and I'd like to say welcome to back to my kitchen. Um, yes, you're back in my kitchen. I was going to film this outside but the cicadas are making such a racket out there I thought you'd never hear me. So I thought it best just to meet again in my kitchen. And while I'm saying hello to you all, I'd really like to welcome my new subscribers. I hope that you enjoy my channel and you enjoy my babies and you enjoy my waffle. I think that's probably the best word for it. Um, yeah, so this is Lottie and I've dressed her in slightly warmer clothes today because it's cooled down yesterday especially was lovely and cool. There's not really any humidity and it was grey yesterday although today it's a bit the sky's blue so it's a bit warmer today but I still thought I could get away with this outfit. What what Lottie is wearing is a two piece because this is just a little top and she's got bloomers on. There's the bloomers. So it's just a little white top and white bloomers in a self striped fabric. It's not printed, it is actually textured so it's got depth. The stripes actually have depth and it's made by Petit Bateau and it's in a size one month. And I thought, oh this isn't going to fit her. It's just something I've had in you know in my stash. And I thought, oh what a shame it's not three months, but it fits her perfectly. In fact three months might have been too big, so I'm really happy with that. So she's also wearing a beautiful little blue bonnet and matching blue booties and they have pom poms on them. And I thought I'd just add that for fun, not because she's cold or because I'm cold, but I just couldn't help myself, could I? I just couldn't resist. I've got these bunt and booty sets, I think in a cream and maybe in pink as well. I got them from Etsy ages ago and I couldn't wait any more to put them on when I saw them in when I was going through my things. I just thought, yep, she's got to wear them too. And we can pretend it's a bit cold, can't we? Her little legs aren't cold, even though they're bare. She's very, very comfortable. So that's what my Lottie's wearing, and she's holding her bunny as usual. Um, yeah, so that's Lottie in her pram in the kitchen. And I thought, I don't know if you guys know of Ashley from Baby Love Heart Smith. Um, she's just, she's got lovely reborns, but she's also a collector of vintage dolls. And she started to show them, and of course that's made me want to show mine as well. It reminded me that I used to do that quite often. So, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> she showed a gorgeous um, Topsy Turvy doll on her channel um, a few videos ago now. And the, it was a little red riding hood, and then when you flip the doll over there was Grandma, and on the back of Grandma's head was the big bad wolf. And um, so I said to Ashley, oh, I've got a few topsy-turvy dolls, some vintage ones, a bit older than hers, and I'll show them. But when I had a look in my doll room, there's so much um, reborn things in the way that I can't actually reach them without unpacking the whole room, and I just didn't feel that committed. So I'm very sorry, Ashley. When I do unpack that room for some other reason, when I need to get you know everything out, which happens often, so don't worry, it won't take too long. I'll get my topsy turvy dolls out and show you. But in the meantime, I thought I'd bring you some other of my dolls, which is a very small part of my collection. I love um, molded hair dolls, so I'll just show you a couple of them that I have, and these are German, and you can see there's this beautiful girl. And she's got moulded hair. Let me bring her up a bit closer. Oh, good boy, camera. He's still behaving. There's her moulded hair. Isn't she gorgeous? And she is a form of plastic, but it's a very... Let me just tap it for you. It's a solid sort of plastic. It's not... Yeah, it's solid. It's not weak. It's pretty strong. And her dress is modern. It's a dress I bought from a seller at our doll fair. She makes the most exquisite exquisite little tiny doll clothes and big doll clothes but they're all exquisite so that that is her that she's German and I'd say she's probably from about 1940 probably and then these three little ones I don't know if I can show all three at once but let's see if my hand can hold three oh, I'll show you two because they're brother and sister these two and they're just regional dolls and they would have been very 
um, cheat dolls. They're not not particularly special or oh, good boy camera. How's that? You know, they're just ordinary dolls, and they're uh, probably a dime a dozen. I think you can get them anywhere easily. Let me hold them up separately for you so that you can see them better. So this is the little boy in his outfit, and you can see how small he is, and he's got the moulded hair. And he's a, these ones are a different sort of plastic. I don't know if you can hear the difference. It's a thin plastic. In fact, I think if you drop these out, oh yeah, look, his head's a little bit apart there. It's got a crack on the side, so they would break. So that's the brother, and here is his sister, made of the same plastic. Let me bring her up. She's got her moulded boot, moulded and painted boots as well, and her little regional costume with her moulded hair, with the three curls, one in the front and at the sides. Very, very cute. You just turn her around there, you can see the back of her head. So that's those two. And then the one, the other one that I grabbed was this little one, and she doesn't have any clothes. There she is. Isn't she sweet? I'll bring her closer. You can see her face. There she is. And she's sort of got a little bun in her hair. See that? It's all swept up into that little bun. And she's missing her outfit, but I love her anyway with her moulded and painted shoes and socks. I think that's such a cute feature. I love that. And all these three would be, um, hard to say, maybe 1940s, 1950s. And now these last two are actually celluloid. So that is a different type of plastic that is very thin. Very, very thin and very easy to, to squash. You often see celluloid dolls and they might have a squashed nose or a pushed in cheek. But this one's okay. She's not too thin. And she's got her moulded hair with that big curl down the middle. Isn't she sweet in the curls at the side? She's German. These are all German. Oh, okay. Sorry about my camera. But he's being pretty good so we can't really complain. And she's wearing a, a regional costume too. She's got a skirt on and a little blouse and a, a scarf around her and an apron made of lace. And she has the moulded shoes and socks, moulded and painted shoes and socks, which I absolutely love. The shoes are red and the socks are white. And so that's that one. And now the last one I'm going to show you is this little one. And she's in her original dress, like the other last one was. And she's, let me just tap her, yes, she's a plastic, she's not celluloid, she's a bit thicker. So they're all, they're, I mean, plastic was a new discovery back in the day. Let me just see, she's a bit bigger, I think. There we are. That's all of her. So she's got the moulded and painted shoes and socks as well. And around her neck is a key because she can walk, I think. I've never tried her, so I'm not really sure. But that's her original key and her original dress which is like a yellow checked with red and blue lines running through it and a bit of lace around the waist and around the neck. Um, and she, see her moulded hair? It's a little bit different. She hasn't got the little top knot, although she, she's just got sort of waves going across the top of her head and curls at either side. I'll just show you the back if my camera will let me. There we go. See those little curls at the back? Very, 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 very cute. And I guess she'd be probably, I don't know, just guessing with all these ages, probably the 1950s maybe or 1940s, judging by the hairstyle. And they're all, I love them all, all those beautiful girls and boys. And um, they're various types of plastic. Yes, so plastic was a new in invention back in the day and everyone was making it. And so there were lots of different types of plastics. There was the celluloid and there was Bakelite, which is a quite different. That's quite a brittle, thick plastic. But there are some dolls that were actually made out of Bakelite. Very hard to find. Um, but they, they do exist. I don't have any. Because um, I tend to buy things in, in their original condition, whether it's good or bad. And so I prefer to buy them in good condition. It's quite hard to find those Bakelite ones. So yeah, there's Bakelite and then all sorts of other different, like xylenite and all that sort of thing. Lots of different versions of Bakelite. And the cell celluloid, which they made big dolls out of as well as these little ones. And they had to, and they made toys and all sorts of things. But 
the manufacture of celluloid stopped because it's very flammable and also um, it's very soft and easy to, to break or crush. So they, they didn't last too, too long, although there are still a lot of dolls around. There's a brand called Kader, which uh, OK Kader, K-A-D-E-R, that made a lot of celluloid dolls. And they exist now, and they have plastic ones as well. And they last, you know, a, a more modern plastic, they lasted a bit better. Um, yeah, so that's some of my moulded hair babies, little German ones, that I thought I might show you, seeing as I was, I didn't want to unpack the room to, to, to reach my beautiful topsy turvy dolls, but I will get them out. I have lots of things I could show you. Um, which I will do from time to time. I don't want to bore you because this is a reborn channel. So just occasionally I'll show you some of my vintage, or I even have some an antique dolls. And if you want to know the difference between vintage and antique, vintage is anything older than 25 years. So from, the, from this moment, anything older than 25 years is considered vintage, and anything older than 100 years is considered antique. So you can see that over time, what's considered antique and vintage does change. But um, that's a, just a rough guide so you know what you've got there. There's one, I don't know if you would like to hear me talk a bit more, but I would like to just talk a little bit about Katie's last video where she talked about the pros and cons of being a buyer and having an artist as your friend. And I've been thinking a bit about that and I agree with a lot of what Katie says but the trouble is when you start to generalise a bit it gets difficult because I see everything as like individual relationships between people that no two relationships are the same so one artist may be one way with someone and a different way with someone else because it just depends on your relationship so all I can do is I could talk from my point of view as an artist um, and, but it's only how I feel and because I don't really um, make dolls the, and I don't know what the word is and transact the way other people do because I tend to work from repeat business and I tend to also have the people I sell, sell dolls to become my friends so I have dolls that I've sold to people many, many years ago and they still send me pictures of their dolls or, you know, when they get another, a new outfit they, they tend to, to let me know and send me a new picture and things like that. So, you know, once you do sell a doll to someone, often your relationship immediately changes. Plus, in the past, I've, I've only sold to strangers. So I've, you know, made a doll, listed it on eBay and it's sold. So people tended to know what they were getting. It's a little bit different when you're dealing in that situation than when you're dealing in making a custom or you know just a specific kit for someone but from my point of view because I I don't really ask for money up front I prefer the buyer to see the doll when it's finished and then if they still want it they give me the money um, because I always just want my friends slash customers to be happy that's really my main aim. I can always sell the doll on or, you know, work something out. I, the money is not not the thing for me. It puts me under a lot of pressure if I've got the money already before the doll's produced. I just think it's not fair to have to pay for something that you don't actually have. I would prefer someone to pay once the doll's finished. And that's just me. So that, that side is okay. And also, I... No, I mean it does feel awkward if someone were to sell one of my dolls and that's only happened once. I saw one of my dolls reappear on eBay but um, that was many years ago, probably like 10 years ago. No, no, it wouldn't be that many. Seven years ago, something like that. So I probably only made it like eight years ago. Oh, that's, wrong. that's completely wrong. Ignore all those numbers, everybody. I think that doll was one of the very first I made, so that would have been eight years ago, but she didn't turn up until 2013, so that's four years ago. So Okay, so four years after I sold it, I saw it reappear, and that didn't bother me at all. It, she sold, and she's a sweet doll, a beautiful kit that you can't get anymore, one of Adri Stoat's kits that I absolutely love. I actually have one here because I love the kit so much. I bought it from someone. 
Um, anyway, I di digress as usual. What was I saying? <coughs> Excuse me. I don't remember what I was saying. It's gone from my head. So, oh yes, I know what I was saying. How I would feel if someone sold one of the dolls that I'd made just for them. You know what? It would it would be a bit painful, but I tell myself that once the dolls leave me, they're not mine anymore. I've put my heart and my love into them, but then they belong to somebody else, and whatever that person wants to do, they will do, and it's their property. They've given me the money, they own it, they can do what they want. So even though it would feel a bit, I would feel a bit funny about it, a, a bit, but I wouldn't ever say that, because I don't want my customers to ever feel beholden to me or... You know, it, it's just I want them to love what they've got, what I've made them, and it's theirs to do whatever they like with. It's just been my pleasure to make them. So that that's how I feel about the whole, you know, having customers as or friends as customers, and that's just from my point of view. I don't represent any other artists except myself because I know I I'm not really. I mean. I don't do it to make money. I do it because I love making these babies. That's really why I, why I make them. And even if I made no money, I think I would still keep making them. I don't know what I'd do with them. I'd probably... I don't know. But I just love making them. I love the end result. I love dressing them. I love seeing people's happiness with them when they have them. There's probably only one or two dolls that it would break my heart if they left their owner. But other than that, I think... I would just have to give myself a strict talking to and say they're not mine anymore. They, I sent them with love and they stay with that love but it's not my possession anymore. So hopefully that, um, well I don't know if that does make any sense, I have no idea because I didn't even think twice about what I was going to say. But I'm glad that you've been here with me, I hope I haven't bored you too much and on this beautiful, beautiful day. Did I even tell you what day it is? It's Monday and it's nearly 3 o'clock now in the afternoon. It's a gorgeous, glorious day. And I hope you've enjoyed seeing Lottie, her outfit, my little German babies, and just hearing how I feel when I make dolls. So, And also just I hope my new subscribers won't be put off by my prattling on. I hope that you've enjoyed what, what you've heard and seen today. So everyone, I'd just like to say thank you and go across to see Ashley at um, Baby Love Heart Smith. Smith is a separate word. There's a gap between Baby Love Heart, which is one word, and then Smith. So go, if you haven't seen her already, hop across and have a look. She's got gorgeous, gorgeous reborns and she's just started to show these vintage dolls, as I've said. So thank you everyone. Thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen again. Maybe next time we'll try um, videoing outside depending on the racket that's out there and so thank you very much and take care be kind to each other bye bye everyone <laughs>